Hey, good morning, everyone. Hope y'all are doing great. Uh, getting a little bit later start today. I uh, just needed a little bit more sleep. Sometimes we all do that. But I'm going to talk a lot about what's going on in the tropics and why things are so active, even as we head to the very end of October into early November. Remember, at least here in the Atlantic and Pacific, the hurricane season runs until November 30th. So we still have about 35 days of it to go, and that means still some potential action. I'm also going to talk here in the second part of the video about what we can expect heading into the weekend and early next week and some wintry weather and some potential problems here in a good chunk of the country. So some big changes coming here that we all need to be preparing ourselves for. Uh, here's a look at the Caribbean and it's been a pretty quiet season except in the Lesser Antilles, but we really haven't seen anything in the Western and Central Caribbean. That looks like it's possibly gonna be changing here as we head into next week, as we have an area of concern in the Southwest Caribbean that looks like it's gonna track northeastward towards Jamaica, Cuba, maybe Haiti and the Bahamas. Uh, Tammy is still out there. She never really died. The hurricane center gave up on her temporarily and said, oh, this is not tropical anymore. But she's starting to get back into that mode where she's becoming tropical. And this has been a headache of a storm to predict. Um, once again, models had a lot of uncertainty, several solutions pulling it back towards maybe the southeastern United States or over Bermuda. That does not look like it's going to be the case again. And uh, I can't really accurately forecast something that's getting drawn into 150 different scenarios here. I'm just going to do my best and keep up with it on a daily basis. So please give me a little bit of grace here. But um, I will say if you are in Bermuda, this is looking like a potential threat here for the weekend. But the majority of it's going to stay off to your east. Uh, having said that, you know, I have friends that are on cruises that had to come back early from Bermuda. And that's probably a good idea, even though the storm's not going to go right over the island. It is certainly going to produce some rough surf and nobody wants to be on a cruise ship when the waves are 30 feet high and it's just jumping all over the place. You get really sick fast. Uh, so we are watching a system in the Pacific. And right now that's Invest 92E and it is not yet fully developed, taking its time. But there are some signs that it will begin to very quickly develop over the weekend. And the track on it is still quite uncertain. But the uh, Pacific coast from the Gulf of Tuanapec down through El Salvador needs to watch it. It may be in our hair for quite some time longer here. Uh, here is a look at the seven day formation outlook from the National Hurricane Center. And you can see they are now giving the remains of Tammy a 50 50 chance of becoming tropical again. I'm not even going to I'm not going to go there. Let's just say she never went away. She's just maybe latched onto a front for a day and about to detach herself again. So we may have another round of some Tammy to, 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 to look at. Um, the next system here in the Western Caribbean has about a 30% chance of becoming Vince um, somewhere south of Jamaica here early next week, really in the next seven days. And then in the Pacific, we are likely to see a new depression and then tropical storm Pilar uh, by the end of this weekend or beginning of next week, a 90% chance of development. It's taking some time right now to organize, but I think it is going to get there. And behind Vince in the Atlantic, we may still have to keep an eye on things in the Western Caribbean for the first full week of November. I've been talking about that as kind of an area of a hot spot. Uh, in an El Nino season, it's less likely we see multiple storms, but this year things are a little bit weird with the water temperatures being so warm. Uh, so we definitely have a chance at looking at that. I love tropical tidbits. It's like it's listening to me talking about cruises here. Isn't that creepy? Uh, but yeah, I'm ready for a cruise. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> anyway, sorry to... Uh, to detract you guys here. I'm gonna pull out my pen and start annotating some things for you guys so you can watch at home. And <clears throat> here are the uh, features that I'm watching for you guys. Let me find it here. Um, Zoom actually changed some things around. Uh, all right, there we go. <laughs> We're having fun today. Uh, but here you can see this is Tammy right here. Uh, this is Bermuda. How do I get that bigger? I don't even know. Um, There we go. Uh, this is Bermuda right in here, and this is the circulation center of Tammy. So it's still about a couple hundred miles east of Bermuda and really not moving much right now. Actually, potentially going to be doing kind of a loop and going back out to the right. And of course, models a few days ago had the loop going back out to the left, but they have changed their tune. And the reason why uh, there's actually a pretty deep trough digging down into here. Um, models a few days ago said that the trough was going to lift out and move into the North Atlantic, leaving a weakness for Tammy to come below it as a new ridge of high pressure builds in here. That's looking less likely today. What's likely to happen is that the trough is going to pick up Tammy. It's going to kind of get absorbed in that trough and eventually head out to see this way, but it may 
drop itself or may uh, latch itself away or detach itself. There we go. Detach itself away from this trough later next week and get stuck in here and maybe try to loop around a few times. But either way, I think once we get past early next week, it's no longer going to be a threat to any kind of major land. Now behind it, we do have a, another trough in place here, kind of an upper level feature, um, not expected to develop. The GFS went crazy a couple of days ago, taking it here and developing it very quickly in this region. That does not look like it's going to be the case. However, we do have kind of two circulation centers here and here that we're watching. And because this system here is no longer um, kind of caught up in the same gyre that's formulating the storms over here in the Southwest Caribbean, it's got a chance of becoming a hurricane, uh, but we've got a big front dropping down kind of in here, and that's gonna push south and actually keep this system potentially from coming up where Otis did. So some better news there. However, uh, if the front gets stalled in here, which it looks like it might, this system could still be in Central America next week. Now this system here is actually gonna have an avenue to track northeastward, and we may actually see this feature here develop a surface low. So we may actually have Tammy here, uh, we may have Vince here, and we may have a non-tropical low here. So kind of three systems on the map. And then after this comes westward, we may actually see a fourth system, Whitney, as we get to about the 8th to 10th of November, but I don't wanna to get too far out ahead of myself for the time being. Uh, so things are still very active in the Caribbean, but, the good news is that because we have these fronts that are dropping down through the central and eastern U.S. next week, I think we're protected from Florida on northward, and any action is going to hit a wall once it gets to this point. I drew that right through Florida, but kind of more like this. Uh, so more than likely, something's going to come up into here or get stuck in the Caribbean and loop around. In the Pacific, though, we're still pretty busy. We've got this flare up here that's got a small chance of developing. Uh, but I'm more concerned about this feature right here. So that is the state of the tropics for the time being. Things have shut down off of the um, Cape Verde Islands, uh, which we would expect because it is almost November. But the reason we're still seeing the action that we're seeing is that we've got fronts dropping farther south, adding more moisture into the atmosphere. And there is some wind shear. That's why things are not developing quickly at the time. Uh, but we do see well above average oceanic temperatures. Um, this is Celsius and we see uh, temperatures that are as much as three to four degrees Celsius above average across the central and eastern Caribbean. Nothing's really popping up in here because of the wind shear, but in here, wind shear is lighter this time of the year. So between Jamaica and Nicaragua, we definitely have some more favorable uh, conditions for development. When we get up to Bermuda, despite all the storms we've had, waters are still running about average, but we are starting to get later into the season. So what does come up through here is likely to become uh, more non-tropical or post-tropical. The Gulf is still warm, but it's cooler than it has been throughout the entire season as we see these fronts dropping down. So I think the Gulf is pretty much shut down for the time being, save something maybe trying to sneak through Cuba towards the Keys. But um, really the areas of greatest concern are off of the Pacific coast of Central America right in here. And on this side of Central America in here, this is kind of, if you want to draw kind of a an area to watch or two areas to watch, um, they're in here and over in here. These are the two hot spots here over the next few weeks. So we are not done just yet. Um, we are still watching things here in the next a couple of days. Sorry about this pen issue here. I don't know what's going on, but um, let's just clear it all out and move on here. So I'm, things have changed in my software and I, I just don't have the time to sit here and worry about it. So I apologize for those of you that are watching from home and having some trouble seeing things, but just kind of follow along with me if you can. So great in the Gulf right now, great off the East Coast of Florida, even great in the Northwest Caribbean as we have our front stacked up here. Everything is buried southward here in the Southwest Caribbean and off the Pacific side. But we are looking at a, a stalled front producing some heavier storms over portions of Puerto Rico, again, over the Northeastern Caribbean islands and over the Eastern half of Hispaniola. And some flooding will continue to be an issue. And I have been talking about that for over a week now. So I really hope it doesn't catch anybody off guard. Uh, and we're seeing just a weakness here north of Barbados producing some heavier showers and storms. Behind it, you can see an upper level low spinning in here. Let me get my pen back out for you guys. I'm gonna to try to get it right this time. Uh, but you can see kind of an upper level low circulating in this area and a lot of thunderstorm action over the monsoon region, but nothing in the core here. So this is gonna stay kind of naked. It's gonna stay disorganized. Generally speaking, it should head west. So we're gonna have more wet weather across the Eastern Caribbean next week. Uh, and what could be a very wet start to November and end of October here across this region. Uh, and but I don't think we're going to see anything develop. Now, here's Tammy. And if you look at it, you'll say, why in the world does that not still get labeled Tammy? And I'm with you guys on that. Certainly uh, it is to the east of Bermuda. It is stalled a couple of days ago. 
Uh, the models showed it pushing the front west, going over Bermuda. Now it's staying just east. It still looks like it's going to track west slowly here and get close to Bermuda later this weekend, but then it uh, should begin to get kicked away to the north and east. And at that point, I think it is a tropical storm again, but starting to move over cooler waters, not moving quickly. So I don't think it's got a lot of development potential to strengthen into a hurricane. Uh, it looks like a post-tropical storm, but it's starting to look subtropical. and may look fully tropical again. So if you're the Hurricane Center, I can see why you're pulling hairs over it, why we're splitting hairs over it, but it's still out there. It's not gone away anytime soon. Uh, but you can see the big changes today are that the ensembles, rather than taking it over Bermuda and looping it west, have now made the turn back to the right. And you can see there may be a loop coming later next week, but it's going to be well over the open Atlantic. Here's the intensity forecast. It's a stronger tropical storm or non-tropical storm. Again, not going to debate that today. Winds are about 70 miles per hour in the center. And uh, we still have a high chance of that being a feature moving away from Bermuda as we get into next week, actually moving east-southeast. Closer to home, we're looking at a 50% chance of a depression forming south of Jamaica on Monday and a high chance that we have something south of Guatemala in the Pacific, and a lot of uncertainty here. You can see the spread grows. By the time this moves past the Bahamas at the end of next week, we have to watch out for potentially some more development coming here by next weekend, but again, very uncertain at this point. The GFS loves to be aggressive down here until something forms. I think that's premature. Having said that, we do have an opportunity still to see a stronger storm in the Western Caribbean, maybe even a hurricane, even in November, uh, based on the fact that water temperatures are super warm. All it's gonna take is a window for there to be an increase in moisture and lower wind shear for that to happen. And I think if there is gonna be that, it could certainly happen in the first 10 to 15 days of November, somewhere in this region here. Uh, so, and the Pacific's still gonna be pretty busy, believe it or not here. Uh, even though um, we're going to have to probably wait again after potential Pilar to see something. Here's a look at the ensembles. And you can see Tammy mostly moving away to the right here. So another flip in the forecast. You can see this is probably Pilar here by the end of Sunday. But notice how it's no longer tracking right up into Central America. It's actually getting pushed away to the south and west after initially turning northwest. So it's actually going to kind of loop back out to sea. And then here we see our next area of potential concern. Um, which is likely moving northward. All the ensembles pretty much show that heading over Jamaica here next Monday. Um, and, you know, it's probably a weaker system, probably a tropical storm or even a high-end depression at that point. But the next name is Vince. And I'd say there's about a 50-50 chance we get to use up the name Vince on this feature here. Um, here is likely Pilar and still still hanging out. Some ensemble members show it kind of looping around here in the Gulf of Tehuantepec. Others show it moving across Honduras. And uh, the overall trend has been to suppress this to the south and west and keep it over the tropics and not bringing, back it, not bringing it back over Mexico and Central America. Uh, you can see here with our feature, only one ensemble member takes it over the Northwest Bahamas and Florida. Uh, everything else keeps it away here. It's a weak system regardless. I don't think we have a hurricane down here. I think we may have a tropical storm. But after this, you can see there is additional development potential here as we get to about the following weekend, around the 4th and the 5th of November. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on that down in here and some more uh, aggressive solutions, to say the least. With it being 9, 10 days away, of course, things are probably going to change. Here's a look at the uh, Pacific satellite. Here you see our feature here that's not going to likely be a threat to anybody. And you see a lot of disorganization, but a disorganization. I swear I'm going to learn to talk today. <laughs> um, and uh, a lot of thunderstorm action here on the Pacific side of Central America. Closer look shows here's El Salvador. Here you can see thunderstorms blowing up, but we still do not have a well-defined low-level center. We have a ton of rain out there, a ton of wind, a ton of choppy seas, and a ton of warm water, but nothing yet going due to the fact that we just have a little bit too much wind shear. And it's actually coming in from the southwest. So it's going across the top of these thunderstorms and it's just a battle for the time being. Now the wind shear should relax a little bit this weekend and I do think we have a tropical system. Here's the GFS, you can see no longer taking Tammy over Bermuda, it keeps it east and then turns it away over the weekend. Here is what should be Pilar here. It looks like probably on Sunday, we could see some quicker development here. And um, it is showing it creeping northwestward here and becoming a hurricane Sunday night and strengthening pretty quickly. And I would not be shocked with the waters as warm as they are to see this get to major hurricane status in a quick amount of time. Look at what happened with Otis a couple of days ago. Strong tropical storm to category five in 12 hours. Does this do the same thing? 
I think the wind shear is too strong for that to be the case, but it may fend off enough of it to at least get to category two or three. Uh, after that, we have uncertainty. We've got the system potentially stalling near Guatemala or El Salvador, maybe moving northwest into the Gulf of Tuanapec and getting wind sheared out and potentially going back out to sea and weakening as wind shear increases out of the northeast. So the wind shear changes from southerly the next couple of days to northerly as this front drops down by Halloween, by next Tuesday. Either way, we've got to watch it closely in this area, and um, it's going to be a long road to cleaning up here in Acapulco based on what we've seen. On the Caribbean side, we can see here um, the potential for a tropical depression or storm coming by just east of Jamaica, just west of Haiti. This could change, but it's moving pretty quickly over Cuba and into the Bahamas by next Tuesday. Um, you can see we also have a non-tropical low forming near the Bahamas Monday, moving away quickly, which could impact Bermuda here by Tuesday or Wednesday. But take a look at this front dropping down. Big cool down coming for the eastern U.S. for the second part of next week. That's going to suppress any tropical action well to the south of the Gulf, well to the south of Florida. But then as that front begins to retreat northward and a ridge builds back in next weekend, we have lowering pressures again on both sides of Central America. So we do need to keep an eye on things. The GFS in true fashion takes us over towards Belize as a strong hurricane. We'll have to keep an eye on it, of course. Uh, but we may have something again in the Western Caribbean, which could be Whitney, assuming we get vents here uh, over the second part of the weekend. This will look confusing to you guys. It's just going to show you guys some spin in the atmosphere where things are kind of spinning. You see Tammy moving away here. You see additional spinach here uh, over areas northeast of the Bahamas and south of Cuba. And then you see the spinach off the Pacific coast. And nothing wants to come up towards the U.S. So that is the good news for us here in the U.S. But the Caribbean sees a lot of spin and a lot of action here over the next couple of weeks. So we definitely have to watch that. This is wind shear. And what we want to see is... The bright reds, that strong wind shear that keeps storms from forming. Well, in the Caribbean, it's been it's been strong pretty much the entire season, as you would expect in a moderately strong El Nino. But as we take a look here at next week, notice these uh, colors here start to drop off and we have lower amounts of wind shear on both sides of Central America. So that does give us an opportunity for development uh, in, in two po possible locations. You can see Lower wind shear here early next week over the Northwest Caribbean into the Southern Bahamas. Then the wind shear picks up and then again, lower wind shear behind the system next weekend. So again, we've got, we've got things we need to keep an eye on here. Here's a look at what should be Pilar. A lot of uncertainty here. Some solutions pushing it away. Some still drawing it Northwest towards the, uh, uh, towards the coast of Osaka and some pulling it away to the Northeast towards Guatemala. Guatemala and El Salvador. And a couple solutions go hurricane. Now we're seeing kind of a trend towards some weaker solutions. And again, we really just don't quite know yet. Here's a look at the US. Let's talk winter weather. And we do have winter storm warnings over the northern tier here and over the Colorado Rockies. Freeze warnings here over a good chunk of the central plains and the front range, as well as the interior of the Northwest. And winter is certainly coming. Um, here's a look at why. We've got a huge trough digging down into the north central parts of the United States. Big ridge in the east through the weekend. But that ridge does break down and allows colder air to gradually shift south and eastward. And abrupt changes coming next week uh, for the southern and eastern United States. Halloween could be one of our chilliest in several years in the mid-Atlantic, northeast, and even parts of the deep south as you see this push of much colder air and unsettled air coming down. This could actually form low pressure somewhere here in the mid-Atlantic states by Wednesday of next week. And that could also mean cloudy, cool, damp weather for Halloween for some of us here in the Southeast. The trough does linger into Thursday, then lifts out, and we actually start to warm back up from west to east over the weekend next week. And the reason that I'm concerned about tropical action is that there's no trough in the southeast anymore. There's now a ridge building in, allowing things to come underneath it. We call this the ridge over troubled water. Here's a look at our temperature departures and very warm here for most of the eastern U.S. Florida's near average, but everybody else is above average. Um, we see, though, much colder air aloft dropping all the way down into the southern plains here over the second part of this weekend and early next week that sweeps east and southeastward here. It's gonna take a little time, but push number two will get that colder air down all the way into Mexico, all the way into the Carolinas and certainly into the Northeast. It'll bleed down in kind of two waves here as we get through the second part of next week. Here's a look at the latest GFS model. You can see our storm lifting up into Ontario and into Quebec. 
uh, some shower action over the Great Lakes into northern New England and the Atlantic Maritimes the early part of this weekend. Then uh, some cooler air moves into New England this weekend. But take a look at what's going on here in the Rockies and Plains. We're dealing with winter weather from Colorado into potentially Iowa and even some frozen precipitation bleeding down here east of the Rockies all the way into northwest Texas Saturday night and Sunday morning. Uh, along with um, a front that's moving slowly with waves going over it. If this were the dead of winter, we'd have an ice storm. It's not, though, but we are certainly dealing with cold rain and maybe some thunderstorms from parts of Texas right on up the Ohio River by Sunday night into Monday. And it looks like um, New England could actually get in on some snow uh, across the, the north tier here, the north country on Monday, uh, whereas it stays a chilly rain over the coast. Things are going to dry out and clear out for the most part in New England by Tuesday, but we have the second feature to watch that could produce some snow showers over the Great Lakes region here by Monday night and Tuesday, and maybe some surface low pressure here, bringing us some cool, damp weather over the Carolinas, Virginia, and coastal New England uh, later Tuesday, Tuesday night into Wednesday. I live in Raleigh, and I am starting to prepare for cold, wet weather here for trick-or-treating as we take our five-year-old out for that. So um, that weather won't last all week though. It's gonna get nicer after some cold nights, probably some frost and freeze all the way down to I-20, if not deeper uh, by Wednesday night. And then we'll start to warm up later next week with the next system moving through over that uh, ridge of high pressure with some more snow potential. So an early start to winter for many of us here in the Rockies, Northern Plains, and especially New England, uh, but it's not going to last. So here's a look at our excessive rain forecast. Texas remains very wet today, uh, as does the Arklatex, southeastern Oklahoma. Uh, that will start shifting northeast, and we could see potential flooding over parts of northern, Oklahoma, uh, northern and eastern Oklahoma, north Texas, northern central Arkansas, all the way up to the uh, lower Ohio River Valley here by tomorrow night. And then as we head into the weekend, or into Sunday, I should say, um, still a threat for heavy rain across many of the same areas. Uh, with some significant rain. Let's also talk about winter storm impacts. We're seeing a storm wind down here in northwestern Minnesota, significant winter weather over Ontario and southeastern uh, Manitoba, uh, but we still have winter weather over portions of the interior of the west. Tomorrow that's going to shift south and east, and we do have Denver in this potential area for winter weather tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. We'll likely see our first accumulating snow for the Denver area and potentially over five inches for some of the Denver area. Uh, we'll also see late tomorrow night, early on Sunday, <clears throat> a moderate risk for some winter weather. And it's showing it all the way down into southern Oklahoma and towards Lubbock, Texas. And that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on as this colder air bleeds south. Heavy rainfall amounts over the next seven days, two to four inches. I think we'll see some six to eight somewhere here in the Ozark Plateau and the Ouachita Mountains. Um, looking farther up the Ohio River, it's going to be a wet few days over southern Illinois, over Missouri. This rain certainly is actually needed, so we do need to see this rain. Uh, farther south, where the rain is even more needed, we're not seeing it over the next seven days. And looking farther back to the west, significant precip over Colorado and some heavy rainfall over um, areas south of Wichita, Kansas City, and Ponca City, Oklahoma. Snow is something I'm going to be tracking for you guys here over the next few days, and you can see uh, potentially three to six inches of snow over northern Nebraska, more back over the Colorado Rockies. Denver itself, we're looking at potentially five or six inches of snow. Not quite winter storm warning criteria, but I do think we'll have an advisory in effect for Denver as the first snow of the season could cause trouble here later tomorrow night and as we head into Sunday, ending on early Monday. So the second half of the weekend could be snowy in Denver, and um, that's going to be it for a while. Um, looking farther north and east, we are also going to see some snow over the UP of Michigan this weekend, and then our next system spreading from the Dakotas into southern Minnesota and into Iowa and into Wisconsin. Here comes the lake enhanced snow behind it, four to eight inches, maybe locally 10 here on the Keweenaw, um, and significant snow as well on the Canadian side of the lakes here. So winter is certainly coming on schedule here. The other issue I'm concerned about is frozen precipitation. As the cold air cuts under this moist flow aloft, we're going to have a layer of above average freezing temperatures, about 10 to 20,000 feet up. But then closer to the surface, we're going to have sub freezing temperatures. As a result, there could be a little sleet and then freezing rain and drizzle all the way down south of Amarillo to close to Lubbock into northwest Oklahoma into central Kansas uh, and maybe even closer to Oklahoma City, depending on how things play out here Monday morning. So we're going to talk more about that in coming days 
Uh, but the main thing is that cold air is coming and it's coming very quickly uh, all the way into the southeast by the second part of next week, really even by Tuesday. And taking a look at temperatures here for Halloween, because I know a lot of you have kids or grandkids and you may be taking them out. This is a look at what we're looking at. Sub 10 temperatures, single digits over North Dakota, um, below freezing down into southwestern Missouri, 40s and 50s around Dallas, 40s and 50s into the Carolinas, uh, 30s and 40s in the Northeast, 20s in the mountains, of course. And even down to Atlanta, it doesn't sound cold, but upper 50s, maybe a little bit damp. The only places that are gonna have decent weather for Halloween trick-or-treating are gonna be across Central and South Florida, as well as the interior of the Southwest and uh, Western California, but some very chilly temperatures coming. And where I am here in Raleigh, it's showing 48 right now. But if it's raining, I could see how we're at 42 or 43. Same for Greensboro, same for Southern Virginia. We'll see 30s in parts of West Virginia, Western Maryland, uh, near 40 along the Ohio River, but a chilly wind coming and the interior of the Northeast will be pretty chilly. And for those of you in the Great Lakes, uh, we may have a little bit of lake effect snow and temperatures near or below freezing. Uh, so a chill in the air here for Halloween night. Um, it's funny, a couple of years ago, we were dealing with thunderstorms here in Raleigh. We were dealing with 80s. Um, now we're talking 40s and rain. And that can certainly be said across a good chunk of the Eastern United States, except for Florida. Thank you all so much for your time today. I hope you all have a great weekend. I'm going to have another video tomorrow around lunchtime. I'm going to sleep in a little bit. I really need to catch up on that. Uh, but I appreciate you all for your support here. If you are a first time or second time viewer, please come back and please consider subscribing. I very much appreciate that. Uh, but I really do appreciate you all. I can't do this without you guys. And I certainly can't do it without him, my Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, who has given me this power, this spiritual power to share with you guys the weather. And honestly, I, I have to rehash it every day because I have to go to him and thanks. But trusting God to allow me to do this every day. I've been a meteorologist for over 20 years now. I've been a Christian for over 10, but really in just the last couple of years, have I understood what I'm truly called to do? And that's just to share the good news with you guys. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, King James Version, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And I have to remind myself because I feel like I've got to have control of the situation at all times. But truth, truthfully speaking, I don't have as much control over my tongue as I'd like. It's up to God. God is in control of everything here. We have the choice to accept him and to accept his gift to us uh, to become Christian followers, to follow Jesus and to live eternally uh, one day when our time on earth is gone. Um, putting that trust in God has given me a lot of a lot of hope, and I really pray that it's given you hope, but it's also taken a lot of the weight off of my shoulders and put it on his. And because I acknowledge God, I feel like I can do, just do this freely every day, and we can't control the weather. We can try to predict it. I think we're all given that gift uh, to do something. Mine is to predict the weather, even when it doesn't do what it looks like it's going to do, which, trust me, that happens. Um, it's God's weather, not mine. But not trying to do everything myself anymore, but going to God in prayer, talking with him every day and asking him for the courage to continue to do this, asking him for the strength to do this, asking him to continue to bless me with great health. I'm in my early 40s and I definitely don't feel like it, except even after a hard workout, I might, but honestly, I don't. I feel much younger at heart. I feel like I've got many good years to bless many more people. That's why God's put me on earth. I pray he's done the same for you guys. And I don't know what situation you're in, uh, but I do know this. Uh, we know people in our lives who are young, who are battling critical illnesses like cancer. Um, they may not be believers, but what I have asked them is that, hey, is it okay if we pray for you? And everybody said, sure, we can use all the prayer we can. So no matter what those people are believing, I truly still believe that God is in control and that he's going to listen to those of us that talk to him and trust him. And he's going to continue to help those that are going through these critical times in their lives, um, major life-changing events. Uh, so I pray that's the case for you guys as well. And I would love to pray for you and over you uh, with any prayer requests. So have a great Friday, everybody. We'll talk again tomorrow morning and uh, I'll see y'all then. God bless you.